You know, honey, I'm really looking forward to my first day at work. Hey, I can tell. I think I figured out a way to handle Pete Smith. Well, you know, honey, I sure can understand why he's upset. You know, his whole life, he just assumed he was going to take over the family business, and his mother gives a job to you. He doesn't still have an attitude, does he? He shot a spitball at me. <laughs> he, he claimed he was cleaning the straw. <laughs> so, what are you going to do about it? Management 101. Take the troubled employee, try to get the best out of him by making him feel important. I'm going to give him complete responsibility for an entire project, and he'll see that I respect him and need him. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got it all figured out. Honey, when you're president of the company, you've got to be on top of your game. Uh, bye, Hans. Bye, bye. Today's Sunday, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going back to bed. Good morning, Chris. Morning. Hope you enjoy your first day on the job, sir. You, you don't have to call me, sir. I know. I'm just screwing around with you. Do, uh, do I have any appointments? I don't know, do you? Don't you have a daily planning calendar or, or appointment book? No, and you really should have one of those. Yeah, I think I'll pick one up. Oh, uh, get me one, too. Hey, hey, Pop. Hey, Whitey. Fellas. Hey, morning, boss. Uh, those guys from down in print wanted to come up and give you a big print shop welcome back. Hey, Bob. Hi, Bob. Yeah, I've always been moved by that ceremony. You remember everybody, don't you, Bob? Oh, sure, sure. Pig Eye, how are you oh, doing? No, Bob, I had the eye fixed. It's just Richard now. Looks good, Richard. But the Bucky? I had my overbite corrected. So no Bucky anymore. I'm Tom. Great. Six pack? I'm in recovery, Bob. It's Phil now. Praise the Lord. Boxcar? What can I do, Bob? I'm still big bone. Well, it's, uh, it's reassuring that some things stay the same. OK, guys, come on. Let's get your butts back to work. Bye, Bob. Bye, cut, Bob. Cut, cut it out, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, Bob. I, uh, I just wanted you to know how much, well, how good it is to be working with you. You know, because uh, 11 years ago, you know, I was just a big kid off the back of a truck from Missouri, stars in his eyes, saying I want to run a printing press and a greeting card company. Everybody laughed. <laughs> Chew, you, you stood up. You said, come on, give him a chance. Nobody else wants that job. <laughs> I, I just, I'll never forget that. Oh, God, I love you. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> I've been crying all through the break. <laughs> Oh, Chris, uh, would you call Pete Smith and tell him to, to meet me in my office? Right away. He's, he's already in there. I know. I'm just screwing around with you again. <laughs> We're going to get along great. Hi. Hi, Pete. Hey, Bob. Bob, I know that when my mother chose you to run this company over me, I wasn't very gracious or mature. But I want you to know, I intend to support you 100%. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. Uh, could I use my chair? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Is there anywhere in this company I can sit? <laughs> 
How about on a stool in the corner with a, a pointed cap on my head? Dunce boy, that's my name. All right, you, you can use the chair. No, no, you're right, Bob, you're right. That was my grandfather's chair, and then it was my father's chair, and now it's yours. <laughs> you were saying. Oh, uh, I had just a, a kernel of an idea that I thought maybe you could, you could run with. Um, we, we need a, a big push on the, on the, on the, the cutie, uh, Cupid cards for, for Valentine's Day? The fat, naked angels? Yeah. Everybody loves the fat, naked angels. I, I know, I know I do. <laughs> Always getting into some kind of jam. <laughs> anyway, we need a, an eye-popping uh, point-of-purchase display right near the register, and I, I thought maybe something like, uh, well, you know, whatever, because I'm... Uh, I'm giving you complete responsibility for, for the entire project. My very own busy work. Oh, am I interrupting some big old board meeting? <clears throat> Hi, Bob. Hello, darling. Hey, Mom. Scratchy. Oh, my big boy's growing up. <laughs> Oh, it's hard to believe that just 35 years ago you were a smooth-faced, pudgy-wudgy baby. <laughs> Ten hours, I pushed and screamed. <laughs> I have a very narrow pelvic cavity. You'd, you'd, you'd never know. brought you an office warming present. Every executive must have one of these. <laughs> oh, I love it. What, what is it? It's a miniature Zen garden. Oh. I mean, whenever you feel stressed, you just take your little rake and you just make a beautiful design in the sand. Here, Bob, you try it. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> and if you don't use it here, you can always take it home. No, no, I can't. We, uh, we have a cat. <laughs> well, Bob, I would love to stay and watch you rake, but I've got to take this little sketch you whipped out in four seconds and turn it into something real I can carry around the country like a cross. <laughs> that's, that's the spirit, Pete. I, I have the tiger. Bye, darling. Oh, it's bad, Bob. He hasn't shaved. That's the first sign of depression. But who can blame the poor thing? I mean, just in this past year, his wife leaves, his father leaves, and then you come along and step into his dream job. <laughs> he has to have something to get his mind off of work, to put his life back into perspective. You know what he needs, Bob. <laughs> He needs a woman, Bob. Oh, if I could just find the right girl and, and, and drop her into his life. But this day and age, where do you find a sweet, kind, loving, wholesome, gentle, good-hearted girl? Hi, Daddy. I baked you a fresh apple pie. <laughs> Boing. Tell me you made that apple pie from scratch. Well, sure. It's for my dad. <laughs> well, aren't you something? Oh, what a lucky man your husband or, or boyfriend or significant other must be. <laughs> well, I'm not really seeing anybody special right now. Oh, stop it. Stop it. These legs are not for pulling. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that you and Pete should see each other in a social scene, you know, away from the office. At my house, tonight at 8 o'clock. <laughs> you bring Kay and I'll, I'll ask Pete and, and... Oh, Tricia, why don't you tag along just to even out the table? Oh, thanks. <laughs> that, that makes five. <laughs> I never sit. <laughs> Come on, sweetie, I'll give you directions for tonight. Maybe do your hair. 
buy you a dress. <laughs> no, I know you want these, but the meatballs are for the company. No, they're for the company. No. Now, don't give me that look. No. Okay, just one. Good girl. Coming. Wait. Let me see your face here. Entrez-vous, mes amis. Oh, oh so Sylvia, what you've done? Oh, don't cease to mention it. <laughs> don't tell me Trisha didn't make it. Oh, no, 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 Trisha's coming. She just took a separate car. She cooks, she drives. <laughs> oh, you remember Gypsy Rose Dog. <laughs> Say hello to the McKay's, Gypsy. <laughs> oh, isn't she adorable? Oh, Bob, couldn't you just eat her up? Yeah. <clears throat> Smell her foo foo. Excuse me. Her foo foo powder. She went to the beauty parlor today. Oh. oh. <laughs> Con congratulations. <laughs> Trisha. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, you don't need to apologize. <laughs> Practically family. <laughs> well, we had a big crisis down at World of Pies. We ran out of rhubarb. There was almost a riot. Honey, I don't want you going back there. <laughs> Riots become you. Uh, <laughs> You're a vision. Well, you just drop dead gorgeous in that outfit. <laughs> Let's go put on some cheeks. <laughs> Oh, it, oh, it's it's Pete. <laughs> yeah, amazing, isn't it? Dunce boy found his way to his own mother's apartment. <laughs> Petey, look what the wind just blew in. Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Trisha. Oh, Trisha. Well, uh, how have you been? Fine. Huh. Good. Well, I have some delicious hors d'oeuvre if I can pry you two apart long enough. <laughs> why don't we all sit down? I'm going to perch over here with the grown-ups, and why don't you two sit right over here on this couch? <laughs> Mom, this isn't a couch. It's a chair. Oh, for you two skinny minis, it might as well be a couch. <laughs> She's going through a divorce. Your keys are hurting me. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, this is delicious cheesecake, Sylvia. Oh, I only have one piece and one fork left. <laughs> Trisha, Petey, it looks like you two will have to feed each other. <laughs> You can have it. No, you can have it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Trisha, you're sitting right under that vent. Don't you want to get out of that cold air? <laughs> I've, I've got to say something. Oh, Bob, so she's playing matchmaker. The kids can handle themselves. No, no, it isn't that. I think Gypsy Rose Dog has fallen in love with my ankle. <laughs> Oh, look at it shimmering on that lake. Who couldn't fall in love on a night like this? Oh, I love love. Bob, why don't you tell us about the night you fell in love? With, uh, with Kay? <laughs> yes, Bob. <laughs> uh, it was at uh, 
uh, Riverview Park, and um, Kay and a bunch of her girlfriends were were by the uh, cotton candy stand, and uh, they were giggling and laughing, and I was I was over by the by the Ferris wheel, and I could see the Ferris wheel's lights, you know, playing across her face. And you fell in love at that moment? No, no, you're standing too close to the Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah, it clipped me right here. <laughs> I took him to the emergency room in the back seat of my VW Beetle, and he bled all over this big stuffed panda that I just won in the ring toss. They gave him 17 stitches. And one thing led to another, and here we are. <laughs> you know, with all the chaos in the world, you'd think we'd lose our belief in romance, but not on a magical night like this. <laughs> We have to talk. Why? Come here. You're embarrassing me. And you're embarrassing Trisha. I know you mean well, and I love you for it, but you can't push me into a relationship. Mom, when I meet a girl, I like to take her to a movie, maybe get some ice cream, get to know her on my own time, not have my mother make me pass her a dinner roll under my chin. <laughs> Right, Petey. I, sometimes I can be awfully overbearing. I need you to keep reminding me. Right. Let me apologize to Trisha. Trisha. Yes, Sylvia. <laughs> Enjoy the moonlight. <laughs> you know, she acts like she's listening. Please let them in. Oh, don't be silly, Bob. If they wanted to come in, they'd let us know. See, everything's fine. <laughs> Open the door, Mom. Oh, all right, party pooper. Come on, Mom. It's getting chilly out here. It's stuck. Mom, this isn't funny. What do you think? If you leave us out here all night, we're going to fall in love, and in the morning, you'll have grandchildren? <laughs> Be cute. <laughs> it really is jammed. I, I'll, I'll call the super. Oh no. Does that mean we have to stay out here? Yeah, until they get the super up. Oh boy. <laughs> what? I'm not really good with heights. <laughs> what do you have, acrophobia? No, no, oh. no, nothing like that. No, no, I just sometimes have that, that feeling that I'm sure everyone has when they're stuck on a small open space way up high. You know, the sense that something might grab me and pull me over the edge. <laughs> what would pull you over the edge? I don't know. You know, a wind. A sudden shifting of the earth? Or a clown? <laughs> a clown. Sure, sure, that's perfectly natural. <laughs> no, not later. We we've got people stuck on the balcony. Oh, there are clouds moving in. I want to know if you can come up right now. I am asking you nicely. All right. Please. Then what is the magic word? It's, it's okay. We're gonna be inside before you know it. Relax. Remember, your fear is irrational. I know it's irrational. I just told you a clown might come over the railing. Patricia. I'm not a psychiatrist, but it seems to me that what you're imagining is much worse than the reality. Come here. Now let's take one step forward, and if you'll look, I'm sure you'll see that it's not as bad as you think. 
There's a clown out there. I'll kill you. Come on. You ready? <laughs> You're right. It's not that scary. I'm here. I can feel the cement under my feet. Look at that. What? The wind is really whipping up on the lake. Wow, look at all the white caps. You know what they say about Chicago, if you don't like the weather. Yeah, just wait a minute. Oh my God, what have I done? What have I done, my baby? Sylvia, stand back. I'm going to have to break the window. All right. Pete and Trisha, take, take cover. There's going to be flying glass. Sylvia, I'm sorry, you know, about the damage. Oh, Bob, for goodness sake, you saved our children. Oh, that old chair. He was so darn valuable, I was afraid to sit in it. Bob, I don't know what to say. I mean, first you take away the job I was born to have, and then you turn right around and save my life. You really love to play God, don't you? <laughs> Someone has to. <laughs> yeah, you sure let that window know who was boss. You know, it's interesting. Under our civilized exterior, there's a lot of savage aggression just waiting to let go. Well, why don't you use some of that savage aggression to paint the garage this weekend? You just don't get savage aggression, do you? You gonna be okay, Mom? Oh, well, I'll be okay if you two kids will forgive me for all the trouble I caused. Oh. So you locked us out on the balcony in freezing gale force winds. You meant well. <laughs> Good night, Sylvia. Good night, Trisha. Good night, Mom. Good night. Hey, thanks for taking care of me out there. Mm. You need a ride home? Um, I think I'm too wired to go straight home. I think I might just catch a movie. Do you want to come with? Sure. Maybe we'll get some ice cream after. Oh, that'd be good. We did good, Gypsy Rose Dog. 